for the month is being truthful in facts and motives. And our topic for the day is living a spiritual life. Um, because that's really what leads us to that truthfulness in facts and motives. Um, but living a spiritual life is why each one of us is here this morning. We come together to figure out what it looks like to live a spiritual life. And we come together to support one another in doing just that, right? In living from a more conscious place. But we have to stop and realize that everybody everywhere is always living a spiritual life. There's nothing else it could be. If, if spirit is all there is, then there you go, right? Here we are, living in spirit, as spirit, through spirit, surrounded by spirit. It's all we could do whether we're aware of it or not. Whether we're aware of it or not, every one of us is choosing moment by moment by moment the next path on our, on our spiritual journey. We're always choosing, taking a step and then choosing the next step, hoping that we arrive at, at a better outcome for our lives, for our friends, for our planet, for everything, right? That is our desire. So the question becomes, are we doing that consciously or not? Are we making choices that we're pretty sure will lead to a better outcome for ourselves and our planet? Or are we kind of just walking around pretending life's happening to us? That, that there's nothing that we can do differently, that we don't need to do anything other than show up unshowered and unshaved, so to speak. The answer to that question determines whether we are fully living this spiritual life, whether we're consciously participating in our own destiny or not. It's that simple. Most of us kind of do a little of each because we are human and divine in the same being. We, you know, when something really good happens, we want to take credit for it, right? <laughs> But when something not so good happens, we want to say, it must not be my fault, it must be their fault, or that's fault, or his fault, or whatever it is that we say. Sometimes we do that. And sometimes we just stroll along with whatever happens without an awareness of what's going on inside us until we run into something really big and really painful. Something that requires resources that aren't apparent to us. We can do a pretty good job of just kind of walking through life until something happens that really hurts or something that requires big courage and demands our participation. Or maybe we just wake up one day and realize that we've been settling the whole time. We've been settling for a life that's never really made us stretch and grow, that, that isn't really colorful, it's just sort of blah, not very interesting, not very joyful. Or sometimes, sometimes we hear that something's been knocking inside of us, and knocking and knocking and knocking, and we finally stop ignoring the knock and go and open the door and find out what's there. Howard Thurman I didn't even know how to begin to describe Howard Thurman. He was an author, a theologian, a philosopher, an educator, a civil rights leader. He was a lot of person in one person. And he wrote, whatever may be the occasion, there comes a deep necessity which leads you finally into the closet with yourself. That's the closet Jesus spoke of, not the closet we sometimes barricade ourselves in and come out of. This is when Jesus said you go into the closet with your maker, right? Whatever may be the occasion, there comes a deep necessity which leads you finally into the closet with yourself. It is here that you raise the real questions about yourself. The leading one is, what is it after all that I amount to, ultimately? Such a question cuts through all that is superficial and trivial in life to the very nerve center of yourself. Whether it's pain, or longing, or a desire for a greater way of being, whatever it is that leads us on this inward journey, what we find at the nerve center of ourselves is something beyond our wildest dreams. Because what we find there is the divine itself. 
we find ourselves as the living spirit. We find ourselves as spirit that's always working for us by working through us, as us, right? Whatever it is that makes us discover that, what we find at the nerve center of ourselves is the power presence of love. And it's beyond our wildest dreams. Because it's not the kind of love that we learn from country western songs and advertisements. It's the kind of love that kind of blows our hair back. Because we don't need to do anything to earn it or receive it. All we have to do is allow it, right? When we go into that closeted time with ourselves, if we're curious and willing enough to look at the truth of how we've lived up to this point, we find something amazing. Because every single one of us, every single one of us have already been through some really hard times. Yes? Every one of us. We, some of us may be in the middle of a hard time right now and forget this. But the truth is that we all are already so courageous. It's amazing. We have already walked through stuff that has created this giant amount of courage in us. And we forget about it. You know, we've all walked through difficult, difficult stuff. And here we are, pretty whole. Pretty whole. It's wonderful. So I'm not, you know... <laughs> We just don't realize how much courage we innately have and how much courage we've already shown in life until we're in that closet with ourselves saying, let's just take a look and see what I've done so far. We all have the courage to take the steps towards who we truly want to be. We all have the courage to become conscious of our own spiritual nature. We all have the courage necessary to live a spiritual life, which may sound odd, but I think it's true. It takes courage to become conscious of our, of our true nature. It takes courage to not buy into what the world tries to sell us. We're very counterculture here, you know. We are. Because the culture tries to tell us that we're limited and weak and powerless and things happen to us that we can't do anything about and we're stuck with whatever life throws our way, and we have to have the courage to say that is not the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am is I choose what I experience in this life. It takes courage to turn towards that power and presence of love within us and remember that that's us embodied. We are embodying that. We're embodying that. There's no place we can go where it doesn't exist, right? If God is all there is, it's around us and above us and below us and in us and through us and in everyone we look at and everywhere. It takes courage to live that conscious spiritual life, to nurture our, our relationship with what's within us and around us. And that's why we come together here. We come together to remind each other that that's the truth of our being. We come, we come together to practice with each other. We come to help each other remember that living the spiritual life is where freedom and peace and joy begin. Right? We have all the right equipment and we have all the right map for this journey already. Our philosophy gives us the right tools. We have practices that deepen our connection with that which is within. We have practices that change the way we think and feel and perceive and believe. And we have a community that helps us keep our courage strong, helps us keep our faith strong. You know, all we have to do is look around and watch each other walking through the struggles and joys and ups and downs and great and sadness and joy with grace and love. And all you have to do is look around and you see it everywhere. Because that's what, be, what you all do. You take your courage and you keep walking. And it's breathtaking to watch. 
The interesting thing about the map is that as soon as we take a step in the direction we want to go, it shows up. And then we take another step and more of the map shows up. And then more of the map and more of the map. So we've got the tools in the map. The map arises naturally out of what we value. Relationship, connection, growth, freedom, self-responsibility, growth and evolution, compassion, love, integrity. So those are the things that we've claimed we share as values, and that's where the map comes from. We go within and find what we most value. The guideposts then become clear, right? The biggest one is the guidepost called love. If we follow that, we're almost always going the right direction. The map shows up for us over and over and over again, and sometimes even then we stumble and fall even as our experience changes suddenly around us. Sometimes it's hard to stay focused on the map and using the tools. Sometimes we ignore the map altogether and head off into the valley of denial or the desert of shame or the mountain of resentment. You know, we all do that. And, and when we do, we just pick up our tools resume the practices, reintegrate our thinking with what we value, and consciously step back into the power and presence of love. Here's the thing I know about this spiritual life. It's not a destination. You never arrive. There's no place to arrive to, right? You never arrive. We pass through times of great spiritual growth and great power, and we pass through times of pure grace. You can't call it anything else. And we pass through times of pain and questioning, and nobody gets out of it. Nobody gets out of any of it. It's all part of the, the deal. The only variable is how we respond to it. Do we park there in the desert of shame and stay? Or do we Treat it as some place we you know, visit, learn something from. Hmm, gotta go now. <laughs> something else is around the corner. And that's true whether it, for us individually, or as a community, as a nation, as a planet. How we respond to it determines what, where we wind up. I've used this quote before, but it's one of my very favorites. It's from the Zen master, Shunryu Suzuki. And he said, each of you is perfect just the way you are, and you could use a little improvement. <laughs> that is the paradoxical nature of this journey in one quote, right? Living a spiritual life means both that at every point of choice we always aim to take the high road in our next step, and we recognize when we don't. Sometimes we just don't. Sometimes we get imp impetuous and we just say, no, not going there. Other times we're in too much pain to really be able to discern what the high road is. <clears throat> For whatever reason we do it, it's okay. It's okay. We recognize that we haven't. We take a different step. No matter how many times we get off this idea that we are 100% self-responsible, whenever we step into fear, whenever we step into judgment or resentment, it's never too late to change direction. It's never too late to take a step and another step and another step towards the power of love, towards the place of truth, towards that integrity that we're searching for. And one of the tools that we, I think, have to pick up and use on this journey is to stop defining ourselves by the times we screwed up. Stop defining ourselves by what we didn't do right. And start remembering that what is within us is the presence and power of love. Awaken to that and live from it more and more and more. That is the best that any single one of us can ever do. Right? There's a little Rumi poem that uh, is one of my favorites that he wrote uh, 
Come, come, whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you've broken your vows a thousand times. Come yet again. Come, come. Rumi was very wise. Very wise. He recognized a couple of really vital things in this little scrap of poetry. First, we will break our vows thousands of times. Every one of us will. Every one of us will get caught in a place where we're not, where we all of a sudden recognize that we took a wrong turn, we're not where we want to be, that we've messed up, right? We break our vows thousands of times. We don't always take the high road. But when we're willing to be conscious of that, make a different choice, make amends if, we tra if we've trashed somebody else's life, and go forward. And second, maybe best, Rumi reminds us that this is not a caravan of despair. It's not. It's a caravan of growth and learning and joy, of joyfully becoming what we came here to be, of joyfully expressing more and more and more, allowing the divine, the power and presence of love to be what we are. So as we're able to do that, the smallness and the powerlessness and the limitation that the world urges on us shows up less and less and less. We just have to remember that this bear has no seat on this camel, right? Ernest Holmes, our founder, wrote this about the spiritual life. He says, don't be afraid to be spontaneous. Virtue is always unconscious. We have to make it unconscious. It's always spontaneous. If we can first come to sense the human and the divine are the same thing. There it is, right there. The human and the divine are the same thing. There's no difference. I lost my place. If we can first come to sense that the human and the divine are the same thing, that the mind we use in our human reasoning is merely as much of that mind which we call divine as we are able to use, we shall find that this practice of the spiritual life is the most normal, natural, and spontaneous thing in the world. I love that. The quality of our lives depends upon how conscious we are of our union with the divine. The quality of our life depends upon that. Living um, a spiritual life depends upon how conscious we are that what we use is that mind which we call the divine mind. That what we breathe is that breath that we call the divine breath. That we... <coughs> are seemingly individualized, but what we are truly is part of this infinite divine stream of life. Come, come whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. It doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vows a thousand times. Come yet again. Come, come. No matter where you are, it's never too late. It's never too late to put your feet back on the conscious spiritual path. Look in the mirror and say, who am I? And do it frequently. Who am I? Who am I really? Remember who you are. Practice the spiritual tools you already know and learn some new ones. You know, forgive yourself for being human and spirit at the same time. Adjust your expectations. You will stumble from time to time. You will break your vows from time to time. You will neglect your practices now and again. You will get out of integrity, integrity with the values that you cherish. Get over it. It's part of the walk. It truly is. We cannot hold that against ourselves and say, I'm not perfect, therefore I'm no good. No. No. Ours is not a caravan of despair. Ours is the caravan of joy. It's part of the walk. One foot in the divine, one foot in the human, and we just keep going, right? We just keep going. 
always one foot on the human road, but the more we live towards the divine, the easier, the more joyful, the more full of grace the journey becomes.